Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Tony Giorgio, and on behalf of the mayor and the police commissioner, I'd like to welcome you to the NYPD and to your official swearing-in ceremony. To begin, it's my pleasure to introduce the mayor of the city of New York, the Honorable Bill de Blasio. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm impressed already, Commissioner. They're in strong voice this morning. I want to welcome you all. I want to thank, of course, Commissioner Bill Bratton for his extraordinary leadership, and he is ably assisted by First Deputy Commissioner Rafael Pinero and Chief of Department Philip Banks. And I want to thank Lieutenant Tony Giorgio for always running these ceremonies so well. I have to tell you today, we are so proud of each and every one of you. Uh, I have such respect for the journey you are embarking on to serve the people of this city. Today, 650 of you taking this first step together. And this is the kind of moment in our city that we celebrate when some of the very best among us step forward to public service and to make this city a better place. You, everyone knows that sometimes good news doesn't make it to the front pages. But I can certainly say on behalf of Commissioner Bratton and myself that we understand what an important moment this is and what a good news story this is for the city of New York that such talented people are stepping forward into public service. Now, I'll tell you what you probably have already started to feel. Your lives are changing from this moment. You're taking an extraordinarily important step. It's going to have a positive impact on your lives. It's going to have a positive impact on your family's lives. And I can definitely say it will have a positive impact for your fellow New Yorkers. There's literally no higher calling than protecting others. And that's what you've chosen to do. And you happen to be joining uh, the most dedicated, the most effective, the most celebrated police force in this entire world and it's a credit to you that you have reached this point. We depend on the NYPD for so much. We depend on this police force to continue driving down crime, to protect us from terror, to keep our neighborhoods safe. And we expect that a certain ability in our police officers to understand the incredibly challenging conditions of this city. You know, there are people who join police forces all over the country and could never imagine the challenges that an everyday beat cop experiences just in a single day in New York City. The diversity and the, the incredible density of this city and so many people pressed together at such high speed that we think is normal in everyday life around here. But you are up to that challenge. You're up to uh, not only keeping people safe, but understanding how to work with and how to treat with respect your fellow New Yorkers. And that's part because you represent everything that's good about this city. Let me give you some statistics about this group here today. 140 candidates of the 650 born outside the United States from 47 different countries. Nearly half of this class is Latino, African American, or Asian. Nearly 20% women. We even have two candidates with law degrees. So this class looks like New York City in every way and exemplifies the best of New York City. Now I have to say, uh, I had the honor upon being elected mayor to choose a leader for this police force. And I chose someone who I think is universally known to be one of the great police leaders in the history of this country, Bill Bratton. And I am so proud of the fact that every day our police force is in good hands and our city is in good hands. I have to tell you that as you embark on this mission, uh, it's imperative to understand, even though you're joining the best police force on earth, even though we have the finest leadership anywhere, we never rest on our laurels. We keep working all the time to perfect our craft, to get better all the time at serving our people, to live up to new challenges that we didn't anticipate in the past, and we, none of us, none of us in public service, everyone in this room is in public service in one form or another. None of us can do it alone. And that is a crucial 
rule, a crucial understanding we have to bring to this work. This is, in public service, the ultimate example of teamwork if we expect to get done what we have to for our fellow New Yorkers. So it's not only the teamwork of each officer with each other and with your commanding officers and all the other members of the force, it's also with the people in each community you serve. It's the block association, it's the police athletic leagues, the tenant patrols, the clergy, the small businesses. All of these members of the community are crucial in the work to keep our community safe. They'll all be your teammates. They'll all be people you will find that you'll turn to who will help with that crucial piece of information or will help spread uh, the word on something you need to get out there to do your work well. And together, with that kind of partnership, we can keep this city safe. Now, I have to tell you, for me personally, I saw this firsthand. You know, I used to be a member of the city council. And in my city council district were four precincts, the 6-6, the 7-2, the 7-6, and the 7-8. And I got to work so closely with the, the cops in those precincts and the commanding officers, and I saw day in and day out the incredible work they did. I, I saw officers who knew exactly what was happening on each block, who knew exactly who to talk to, who had information immediately when we needed it, and were always part of the solution because they really got to know the communities they served. And I have a special love for those four precincts because of the time I got uh, to serve with them. But all over the city, there are other precincts doing the same thing every single day, and you're going to be a part of that. And if you bring that attitude of partnership and teamwork, I know great things are going to happen for all of us. We have a safe city, a city that has gotten safer and safer over the last two decades. Talk about good news stories. It's one of the most amazing uh, stories in the history of this city is how over two decades, with many, many people contributing to that process, I might add that one of them earlier in his career helped us with a little idea called Comstat. And Commissioner Bratton's early innovation uh, continues to serve us so well to this day. Well, so many people contributed. Commissioner Bratton, Commissioner Kelly, the mayors along the way, and other elected officials, and folks in Albany who got us funding, and obviously people down at the grassroots, all the folks I mentioned who work so hard at the community level. Combined, that has given us over 20 years of continued progress at driving crime down. It's an extraordinary tradition that we need to build upon, but we have to do something more. We have to deepen that relationship between our police and our communities. We need to make our city ever safer while at the same time consistently respecting our Constitution, consistently showing respect to everyone we serve in each and every neighborhood. We can do those two things at the same time. In fact, the more we do those two things at the same time, the better we will be at the work we do. And that is part of what makes this city the greatest city in the world, that we have that ability to take our diversity and consistently make it into a strength, make it a source of ever greater energy and achievement for the people of this city. You're starting your personal journeys today. I hope you are feeling some sense of the extraordinary pride that we all feel for you as you take this momentous step. Now, you know what's going to be up ahead. There will be many challenges. It's supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be put through very serious tests to make sure that everything is ready when you go out on those streets in that uniform. But I know you're up to the challenge. I know you're ready to join the very best. I want to congratulate you on joining the Police Academy, and I want you to know I can't wait to see you again when you can successfully navigate the course and you get to graduation day. And I just want to say a couple of sentences for our friends in the Spanish media. I'm working on my Spanish every day for those of you who are Spanish speakers, so you'll, you'll uh, forgive me if it's a work in progress. El camino que ustedes están empezando hoy será sumamente difícil. Ustedes pasarán pruebas pero serán los mejores. Felicidades al unirse, unirse a la Academia de Policía. Los veré en la graduación. And now, without further ado, please raise your right hands. Ready, move! And repeat after me. 
I do hereby pledge and declare to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and faithfully discharge my duties as a New York City police officer to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. Ready, front, take seats. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations, officers. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to the police commissioner of the city of New York, William J. Bratton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining us this morning, taking time for your busy schedule for this very significant event. Thank you for your words of support and encouragement. And like the mayor who's practicing his Spanish, uh, I'm practicing changing my Boston accent into a New Yorker accent. Although New Yorkers have many different accents, as you will find as you begin your career in policing and move through our many precincts and boroughs that each borough seems to have its own distinct version of New York. I'm actually getting pretty good. I can detect Staten Island from Queens and New York, so as you will. This is a happy day for me in policing. For police commissioners, there's a lot of tough days, but there are certain days that are always happy. And today is one of those, the swearing in of new recruits into a police department. And you are joining the most fabled police department in the world, the New York City Police Department. The department, even as a young man in Boston many, many years ago, as I dreamed of becoming a police officer, I dreamed of New York. And many years later, I had the opportunity to come here and have never regretted it. And I hope that each and every one of you never regret the momentous decision you have made to become a police officer to become a New York City police officer. You are creating for yourselves an incredible opportunity over the next 20, 30, maybe even 40 years to have lives that are so different than what most people experience in this city and in this country. You will have lives where every day, oftentimes putting your own lives at risk, willingly and voluntarily, something that most citizens never have to do. But you will also have the opportunity every day, if you perform your duties the way we will train you to perform them, you will have the ability every day to affect the lives of countless people in this city. You will have the opportunity to have lives of significance, lives that matter, so that when you leave the New York City Police Department many years from now, you can look back and feel proud of your contribution to this great department and this great city. I encourage you to never forget this day when your lives change so significantly. As I look at you, I remind myself of 43 years ago when in a very similar environment, I along with 154 other young men, because there were no women in the Boston Police Department in 1970 when I joined, in a class of 155 of us, almost half of us were military veterans because that was the time of the Vietnam War, but there were only three minorities, two blacks and one Puerto Rican. In the city of Boston, which at that time was 25% black and largely Puerto Rican among the Latino population. There were no gays, certainly none that were open. It was a very interesting time of transition in policing. You are also coming into policing at a time of, tradition, of transition 43 years later. You are that transition. Look at you. You are New York City. You are reflective of what makes this city so great, its diversity, its educational opportunities. More than half of you have college degrees. Two of you have doctor's degrees. You are 
not only the reality of New York today, but you are the future. And you will shape and create that future through your activities each and every day. My challenge to you is to always serve this city honorably, to conform to the oath of office that you will take once you receive your badges after some of the best police training that the police profession can offer, that as you go forward into lives of significance, into lives that matter, that you will remember that you're not representing only yourself, but that you're representing 50,000 other men and women sworn in, men and women sworn in civilian who, like you, are committed to serving the 8.5 million people who live in the city, the 56 million who travel here each year to enjoy what this city represents. It doesn't get any better than that, to have a life of significance, to have a life that matters, and as importantly, to enjoy yourself, to feel that what you're doing counts, that you count, that you matter. I have a motto, cops count, police matter. You as an individual cop, your actions, your individual actions count, and the police profession matters. In our society, our democratic society that we are so privileged to live in, the first obligation of government is public safety. This mayor that you're gonna be privileged to serve with is committed first and foremost to the issue of public safety in this city. And he will be there for you. He will be there for your families. He will be there for us as we go about our duties to protect and to serve with respect, always within the law and with compassion. I will speak to you at the academy before your graduation. I'll be more specific about my expectations of you at that time. But my challenge to you now is to work hard. You are going to be challenged unlike any other time in your lives, with the possible exception of the veterans in this room, a number of you who have served in uh, uh, war zones. You are going to be taught many new skills and expertise in a very short period of time. If we were not confident that you had the capability to be successful, you would not be sitting here. Because for every one of you sitting here, there are a dozen others who would love to be in that seat. You worked hard to get here. Work even harder to stay here, because we are going to test you. The streets of New York that have been made so much safer through the efforts of the men and women sitting on this stage and the 50,000 they represent are so different than they were 20 years ago. I would like you, 10 and 20 years from now, to look back and reflect upon how much safer the streets of New York are in your generation because of your work. And I have every confidence that you will succeed. In closing, in closing, look at the men and women on this stage in uniform, civilian clothes, the leadership of this department. They didn't get there by happenstance or accident. Those in uniform and some in civilian clothes Every one of them began as you did, sitting like this, taking that oath on the first day. And they worked hard to get up on this stage. In the years ahead, I have no doubt that some of you will be on this stage wearing those stars and bars and eagles. Take satisfaction in whatever you do. Some of you will stay as police officers, detectives, supervisors, leadership. One of the great things about the department you can literally go wherever your uh, goals and efforts take you. I did not dream of being a police commissioner when I was first sworn in. I was just happy to be able to be a cop. But throughout those 43 years, I always stayed a cop. I might have been a chief, superintendent, police commissioner, but I was always a cop at heart. And at heart, I will always have your best interests at heart because I've been there and I know what you're dealing with, and the men and women in this stage know what you have to deal with, and they will work hard, along with your union leadership who are also here today to support you, to ensure, to the best of our ability, you get the best training, the best leadership, the best support that this city can offer. You're also a class, a special class, in the sense that you are the last class that will begin your training at our 20th Street facility. The next class coming behind you 
over 2,200 recruits will begin their training at the new police academy that for so long the city has desperately needed. You will get to experience that during a portion of your training. The next class will complete all of their training at that location. That is also a sign of transition, a sign of support on the part of the city to provide to the best of its ability first class training environments for individuals upon whose shoulders so many burdens are placed. It's a great job. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. This job is worth millions of dollars to you and your family. The benefits, the satisfaction, always do it honestly. Never be tempted to break the law to enforce it. Always do it respectfully. Always understand that you're going to get what you give. And always do it compassionately. You're going to deal with some very bad people. But the vast majority of those you deal with are like you and your families. They want to have a life free of fear. And to have that life, they need you. Congratulations and welcome to the New York City Police Department. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This concludes our swearing-in ceremony. Thank you very much.